Okay, so now we have run the pipe to green, gotten the results, imported them into a Excel sheet, and here uh, we kind of get the values we need for the pooling. But uh, before we get the right values, is that when we do the pipe green, we have four samples that are our standards which means that they have a given concentration of DNA, and we use these, uh, and measure the fluorescence on these, to make a standard curve to fit all of our other samples on the standard curve to estimate how much DNA is in our unknown samples. So the concept is that we use something known to estimate something unknown through a linear regression in, for example, Excel, or you can do it in R, or some other software if you want. So here I have on sheet number two made an, uh, made a small linear regression here with the points, and I have got, gotten out the co coefficients. I use these coefficients that are here in the first sheet to calculate the amount of DNA based on the fluorescence. So for example, here in sample one, we have 3.02 nanograms of DNA per microliter. The next one, 5.13. Uh, the next one after that, 4.87, right? So then for the pooling, as I have stated earlier, we need to get the same amount of DNA from each of the samples, so they are in equimolar concentrations. So here uh, we use a simple calculation that is already in these forms uh, to find out how much volume do I need to take out from sample one to get out 40 nanograms of DNA. And here I use the number 40 quite a lot of times. It's not necessary to have 40, you can have 30, you can have 20, and you can have more. This is something you should talk with the persons in the lab, what is working best for your kind of samples, and maybe discuss with your supervisor as well. But here I use 40 nanogram as an example. This means that from this uh, sample one, where I have 3.02 nanograms per microliter of DNA, I need to take out 13.2 uh, microliters of the P uh, PCR uh, tube and transfer it to the pool, right? So this is the volume I need from this sample. And if you take 13.2, and uh, multiply it by 40, then uh, no. Uh, multiply it by 3.02, then you get 40, right? So that's kind of the connection here. Uh, the next one, which has a higher concentration, right? Uh, here we need less, here we need uh, 7.8. And here, this one that we have 10 nanograms per microliter, or just slightly above, then it's four, right? So 10 times four is 40. Okay, and then you sum all of uh, this to get the total, all of, mm. Mm, all of the volumes there, to get the total volume of the pool, which is here, 128 microliters, and you also multiply 40 with the amount of samples you have, which is 14 in this example, to get the total amount of DNA. And then you divide the total amount of DNA by the volume to get the final concentration in the pool, which is here, 4.34. Uh, and it should be more than 1.5. Oh in best case, more than two, 
uh, nanograms per microliter in the final pool concentration, just to be sure that the sequencing works. Okay, so now we have done the calculations from the picogreen. Uh, so we are now ready to pull them. And how I like to do this is that I place my computer here. And here we have some example uh, samples. Say that this that I called sample one corresponds to T1 here. Here I see that this has a concentration of 3.02 nanograms and to get 40 nanograms of DNA into the pool, I need to take out 13.2. So that's the volume I need. So then I need a 100 microliter pipette, and then I need a pipette tip, what? which I had over here, like this. And I need a tube, Epner tube, that's going to be my pool. And then I turn this to 13.2, open it, take the required volume out. Add it into the tube. Okay, now I'm done with that. And then I close this. And I like personally at least to write done. So I'm sure that this has been done before I take the next one. Otherwise you can mark it with colors or you can find your own system. And then is the next one. This has a concentration of 5.13. And here I need to take out 7.8 microliters of volume. So then I need to change pipette tip again, or pipette. There I have a 10 microliter. And then it was 7.8. that we need to use the other box. Open this one. Close them. Add it to the pool. Discard the tip. And this goes on uh, to, uh, when to when you are done with all these ones. But there are some things you need to keep in mind. And that is if you have samples with a very, very low concentration, like for example, the negative control should have a very, very low concentration or nothing at all. Uh, so then maybe it will estimate that you have 0 0.01 nanograms per microliter as a concentration. And then it will ask you to pipette maybe 200 microliters. But we have never 200 microliters of samples. And it will also dilute uh, the other samples in the pool by adding this high amount of volume. So here you need to do some other things. Uh, and you have different camps on what is the best way to go about samples with a very low amount of DNA or negative controls. Some say that you should take the highest volume of negative control as possible. Say that this is our negative control and we have 40 microliters of volume in that. Then you should add the entire 40 microliters of volume to pool. Some say that that's the right way. Others say that you can calculate the mean concentration of the samples and use that to calculate the volume you needed to add, for example. Or uh, you can uh, 
talk to your supervisors and see if they have other kind of options there. I would recommend maybe use the mean uh, concentration to get a mean volume to take from the negative control or low uh, samples with a very low DNA concentration as well. Yes, and then we have made our pool and then it's just the last bits of quantification that we need to do with the pool and this is something that is required by the sequencing firm. Uh, we are required to take one last gel of only the pool and a ladder this is for the sequencing firm to see if we have dimers as well, that the pool looks nice. So we need to make a final gel and you also need to do a um, nanodrop. And the nanodrop is to show the quality of DNA, how much proteins, how much salt, how much DNA is in solution. And here you use different absorption ratios. And uh, Nanodrop, it's in the second floor, uh, but you can ask us if you need to find it. And then it's just to fill out the required forms for the sequencing and send them in, and then you're done.